So you want to rip your vinyl to digital files so you can play it on your digital DJ setup. I'm here to tell you, don't. I'll explain why, and if you still want to do it, I'll talk to you about exactly how a little bit later on. This is a live show from the Digital DJ Tips DJ School with live feedback and questions from our students and subscribers at the end of this lesson. But if you're watching the recording, you can still ask questions underneath. Meanwhile, though, to let everyone turn up live as ever, we're going to play our intro sequence. I will see you in about 30 seconds time. So welcome to the show. So you want to rip your vinyl. There's a way of doing it which will ensure that your vinyl is really high quality and that the recordings are perfect for playing in your DJ sets, but it does take a bit of work. And trust me, if you're using those cheap from the back of the newspaper, USB ripping turntables that your parents might have, it's not going to work. It's going to sound terrible. You need to do it properly. So today I'm going to talk to you about how to do it. Uh, and I started off by saying, look, you shouldn't do this stuff. Uh, it's, it's much, much, much easier to go and buy the MP3s of songs that you want to play or the WAV files or whatever version you want of songs that you want to play, even if you've owned the vinyl for 30 years, than it is to rip them. You're going to get better results and it's going to take you far less time for what, 99 cents a track or whatever it is you pay where you are. So just don't do it. It's not worth it. But of course, there are times when you... I've got no choice. So I just pulled a couple of records out from behind here. This is Show Me Love by Robin S. You'd be absolutely mad to rip an old copy of Show Me Love as I have here. It's battered. I mean, look, this record's still getting hammered today. It's been played thousands of times. It's not going to sound as good as a nice version of the Stonebridge mix of Show Me Love that you just go and buy from any download site, right? So we won't be ripping that. But of course, over the years, you might have tracks that there's absolutely no way you can find on the download sites. As a DJ, I was given loads of tracks like this, white labels by the person who made the track. Maybe they only pressed a few. A lot of this stuff hasn't made it onto the streaming or download or digital sites or domain at all. And so if you've got old tracks that you just can't find online again and that you would like to have digitally, then you've got not much choice than to rip them yourself. There's other reasons why as well. Let's say you've just taken up digital DJing, right? You've just bought yourself a controller or something, uh, but you've also got your turntables from back in the day and a lot of vinyl from back in the day. And you don't want to go and spend 100 or 200 bucks on some new vinyl. You haven't got the money. In that instance, you might say, you know what, I'm just going to have a go at ripping these. I'd still say find the money and buy them. Trust me, the amount of time you save, it's going to be worth it. But for instance, when I was, I'm trying to think how old I was now, 32, 33, it's back in 2004, there was a, um, the first wave of digital DJ arrived and I really wanted to get involved. And so I ripped, I, I used probably this exact turntable and I ripped loads and loads and loads of vinyl. I spent a whole summer doing it. Uh, because you couldn't go and buy the tracks then, uh, and I really messed it up. I ripped it all to 128 MP3, which, trust me, is not what you want to do. And so I learned a lesson the hard way there, that you've got to do a good job of this. So, look, there's reasons why you might want to rip vinyl. Another reason, by the way, is just to have a turntable sat by your production equipment in a studio. So you can scratch or you can use samples from really obscure vinyl uh, in order to, to, you know, to get the... the creative process going. Uh, in all those instances, being able to rip from vinyl is a good idea. So what I'm going to tell you about today is how I do it. I'm going to tell you about ripping a high quality individual tracks, single tracks. I'm not interested in teaching you how to rip whole albums and stuff, although I'll tell you a tip about doing that at the end. This is individual tracks 
for your DJ sets and how I do it and how if you want to do it, you should do it. We'll look at a bit of gear. I'm sure you've got stuff you want to share as well or you've got questions you want to ask. We're live on Facebook, YouTube and Twitch. Ask underneath, I'll come to you at the end. Meanwhile though, let's start talking through what you need before talking about how to do it. Obviously the first thing you need is a deck, right? You've got to have some kind of turntable in order to rip. Here, do you like the old Digital DJ Tips logo here, by the way? This is from 2010, from when we started, eh? What do you think of that? Uh, so this is my original Technics 1210, very, very high quality turntables. What I would say though is, look at your stylus, head shell, cartridge. You might want to get a hi-fi setup here. This is DJ setup, this is for scratching and so on. Uh, you can get better sounding, but less fun for DJing because they might jump and skip a bit more. Um, cartridges, stylus and head shell setup. So you can get the, the autophone ones that don't need the head shell. Think about this. Maybe if you're gonna replace anything on your turntable, get a hi-fi um, setup down here so that you get really nice sound off it. The other thing uh, on a DJ turntable to think about is to get everything set up properly back here. So here there's a height adjustment, but also very important, the weight. Now you might have the weight adjusted quite heavy for DJing. You might even have, God forbid, a penny uh, blue tacked onto the top here so that it doesn't jump when you're scratching. Uh, definitely take all that stuff off, stuff off and get the weight at the back set uh, exactly right for the cartridge, it will give you better sound. The other control is this one here, anti-skate. Normally you'd set anti-skate to the same value that you've got the weight set to as a rule of thumb. Anti-skate stops the tendency of the tone arm to pull towards the middle. Now you'd think centrifugal force would throw it out, wouldn't you? But it doesn't. Uh, it pulls it towards the middle when you're playing and it puts a little bit of extra weight on it to pull it back again, uh, which again, just keeps it tracking so it's not, it's not tugging to the left or right in the groove, giving you better sound. And actually my turntable at home uh, has got a little weight. It's like literally a little piece of fishing wire tied on the back of there and a little weight that dangles down here with a little kind of hook uh, which does that pulling it back to where it should go, which is quite nice because you can see, see exactly what it's doing and there's a little adjuster for making the weight pull more or less effectively. So get those things set up right. You want your turntable to be set up exactly as it should be so that you get the best sound from it, whatever kind of turntable you have. So you're gonna need a turntable, point number one. Point number two, you're gonna need a, um, you're going to need a, um, Preamplifier. A preamplifier is the thing that turns the signal that comes out of the back of the turntable. So in this instance, it's coming out on these RCAs, but it's coming out as a very low level uh, signal from a turntable, which it does on most turntables, much lower level than, for instance, comes out of a CDJ player, uh, because CDJs are amplified before they leave the CD player. Whereas with a turntable, the signal is not amplified, but amplified before it leaves here. You can test that, by the way. Put a record on a turntable, turn it off, Unplug it if you want from the mains electricity, put a record on, put the needle down on it and spin it round and plug it in to your DJ mixer or wherever can accept a photo input. And you'll hear it just exactly the same as if it was plugged in because there's no electrical input or amplification involved in what's leaving the turntable. What's actually happening is that there's a magnet in here and a tiny coil of wire and the stylus is moving the tiny coil of wire. Like I'm, I'm making it jog here like this to demonstrate that. It's kind of vibrating it a bit and that little vibration creates a tiny electrical current that is then sent out the back through these wires into a pre-amplifier. And a pre-amplifier turns it into a signal that's loud enough to do something with, whether that's use it in your mixer or as we're gonna do, digitize it. So you need a pre-amplifier. Now a pre-amplifier is not built into a Technics turntable. Why? Because DJ mixers, have got pre-amplifiers built in. When you set to phono on the top of a DJ mixer, it pre-amplifies that signal before sending it into the channel. If you set it to line on the top or CD, it won't do that. That's why sometimes if you get this set wrong, you can make the CD sound really bad or your turntables will sound really quiet because you've got the wrong thing set here. So if you've got turntables, and you've got a DJ mixer, you're plugging into a DJ mixer, then you don't need a pre-amplifier because it's already being done by the DJ mixer. Now, some turntables already have built in a pre-amplifier. So for instance, the Reloop RP7000 Mark II has got a built-in pre-amplifier. It can give you a line level output. So if your turntable has got one built in, then you're good to go. You don't need to worry about that. But you do need to somehow get a pre-amplifier going in your turntable. Now, you don't need a DJ turntable, by the way. At home, 
this is my studio. This is where this is where we film our film our stuff. And of course, we've got DJ gear here. But at home, I don't have a DJ turntable at all. The turntable I use at home is this one. It's um, it's a, a hi-fi turntable by a company called Project. Uh, and this turntable actually has got uh, around the back a USB output, which I've circled on that picture there, built in. So this has got not only the phono output and it's got a built-in pre-amplifier for the line output, but it's got a USB output as well. So I can plug directly into my computer using this turntable. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how to get from having your amplified signal, getting it into your computer. Uh, you need an audio interface. An audio interface is the way we get signals into computers. So the audio interface could be built into your DJ mixer. So whereas this, my original DJ mixer, has got the phono boost, it's got the um, it's got the pre-amplifier in it, obviously hasn't got any audio interface in it because, hey, they didn't exist <laughs> for us when that mixer was made. But if you've got a modern DJ mixer, like the Pioneer DJ MA9 here, for instance, it's got a USB socket on it to plug directly into a computer uh, here, actually. So the idea is, well, it's got all kinds of them thinking about it. The idea here is that you can plug directly into a computer with a USB cable from here. So this mixer, being a digital mixer, will take the signal, amplify the signal and digitize it. Great. Some DJ units can do that as well. If your DJ controller is able to accept record decks and you can DJ with your DJ controller separately from the software, then that can do that as well. And that can send the signal out through the USB cable back to your computer. In other words, you've got an audio interface built in if you've got any of that equipment. If you haven't though, you need one. So, uh, if you happen to have a DVS system, digital vinyl system, uh, which is what these interfaces here are for, then in DJ DS1, Reloop Flux, where you plug your turntables into here and then you use control vinyl on your turntables to control the DJ software, then good news, those interfaces do exactly what we need here. They will pre-amplify and send the signal to your DJ unit, which is to your laptop, which is great. But if not, you need an audio interface. This is the little Evermix audio interface. This will do the job just fine. Any two-in audio interface will do. Any two-in audio interface. If you've got a little focus right scarlet, that will do. Anything that can take two inputs, because of course we've got two inputs on a record deck, the left and the right one. That's why we've got the two leads around the back here. Anything that can take two inputs, a stereo input in other words, and send it to your computer will do the job just fine. So however you do it, and whether the combination is from your turntable, your mixer, or your audio interface, or you've got something like I've got here that can do all three, you need to have the record deck, and then you need to have the output of it amplified, and then you need to have it digitized to send to your computer. So the fi oh by the way that you can also get uh, you can also get standalone uh, preamplifiers. So if you haven't got a preamp, say you've got a, a Technics turntable like this, uh, but you want to just plug it into an audio interface that you already own, then you can buy little preamplifiers uh, that look like this. This is a Behringer one uh, which I have got uh, at home actually. I've used this in the past for that, which is used to do exactly the same thing. Uh, to just get that signal up to a line level. So just for completion's sake, there you go. And that's like $20 or something, it's not expensive. And by the way, you can spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds on these things. If you're an audio file and you like the very best quality audio, but I don't subscribe to any of that. This is gonna sound fine, trust me. Right, so you've got your audio now in your computer via all the stuff we've just talked about. You're gonna need some software, right? You can't rip uh, without special software, or can you? You can actually, any recording software, so on a Mac, QuickTime, anything that can record can rip. However, there's a piece of free software, you know what I'm gonna say if you're a regular here, called Audacity. This is audacityteam.org, the website, which is where you can download this from. It's completely free, it's an absolutely awesome piece of software. It's an audio editing piece of software. It's like uh, Adobe Audition, which used to be Cool Edit or any other software out there that you'll pay for basically do pretty much everything on this that you can do on those. Uh, I don't know anyone who hasn't got a copy of this, honestly, on their computer. It looks a little bit like this, and you will click the big record button having set your audio inputs and done the next thing I'm gonna tell you about, which is making sure that your levels are correct. So once you've got your audio input set to whatever USB device you've got plugged in, uh, and you set your recording levels, don't set them too loud, because we can always make it louder later, but we can't turn it down if it distorts. 
Uh, you're going to hit record and then you're going to drop the needle on your record and start the record playing. So you're not going to worry too much about starting the record at exactly the time you hit play on the software or anything like that. There's absolutely no need to do that because we can do all that editing and trimming a little bit later on. So when you finish, you're going to click stop in the software and you're going to have a recording that looks a bit like this. Now I just loaded a track off my desktop, uh, but assume that this is the recording you've got. Now this recording starts at the beginning and ends at the end. As you can see, there's actually a bit of silence at the end here. See that there, that little bit of silence. So you could um, zoom in there and just press the delete key on your computer. See, I've just deleted that off the end. So it's very easy to delete the beginning and end in order to get rid of the noise. Uh, and of course you can zoom in and out here to make it easier for you. There are tools to do that in Audacity. Uh, but then you're gonna wanna do a few little corrections here. So look, you could spend a long, long, long time. And I don't discourage you from doing that if you've got a really precious recording that you want to use. However, there are things I will always, always, always do when I've just ripped a track. So let me tell you what they are now. Uh, there's three of them. The first one I've just shown you, trim the silence off the beginning and the end. The second one, uh, get rid of any loud pops or cracks or scratches. So you can see those on the waveform because they are kind of like, they're like someone's taken a pen and drawn a line from the top to the bottom of the waveform. They're probably louder than the rest of the track. Uh, it's really, really important you get rid of those, even if you think, oh, I don't mind a few crackles on my record. The reason for that is that they will mess up the next step. Plus, they'll be too loud. They'll, they'll sound horrible when you play the track loud. So go and get them. There's a few tools inside Audacity that help you to do this. So in the software, you're going to head to the effect section up here, and you're going to come down to noise removal and repair. repair. Uh, so you're going to go to repair here, and here you're going to highlight the tiny, tiny part. In fact, there's, no, there's two ways of doing this. This is the other way. You're going to highlight the whole track to repair here. This is kind of a nuclear option. But the other option for repairing an audacity is uh, click removal. And click, in fact, it's that's... I'm getting them slightly confused here. One of them makes you highlight a very small part of the track in order to just remove that part of the track. And I thought it was this one. Anyway, we're live here. I haven't got time to just double check what I'm, uh, what I'm uh, showing you here. But effectively, there's two ways of doing it. There's kind of a new clear way where you do the whole track. And there's also a way where you highlight the tiny part and it will look to the left and right of that part and just replace the click with the audio that was immediately before or after it to try and hide it a bit. So they're both in there. Uh, I apologize, I didn't look at that. It's a long time since I've looked at those in Audacity. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, but they're both in there. So get rid of any bad clicks or any bad noise in the track. Uh, once you've done that, once you've trimmed the beginning and end, end and got rid of any bad noise, you do the thing which I was telling you, which means you don't have to record right up to an nth of a degree as loud as you can go. In fact, you're probably best not doing so. And that is there's a function in Audacity and in all audio editing software called Normalize. Normalize is a way of basically turning the volume up on the whole track without going so loud that it distorts, right? So what it does is it looks at the track and it says, where's the loudest part? I'm going to turn that up until it's as loud as it can go. And then I'm going to turn up everything else by the same amount. So you're not changing the way the track sounds at all. You're just making it overall louder. So definitely do that. Now, if I remember rightly in Audacity, on the normalize, there's another little thing you can tick. So let's go to the volume settings here where we'll find normalize. So, oh, we've got to highlight something in order to do that. Right, let's highlight the whole track here. In fact, thinking about it, that's probably why we weren't seeing what I thought we would see on the noise removal and repair. Go to click removal here. Uh, so this is the one where you just decide uh, how nuclear removing the click from the whole track is. And the other one, which is repair, it won't let me do it here because it will say the repair effect is intended to be used on very short sections of damaged audio. And I've just highlighted the whole track. So let's say we had the tiniest, tiniest problem there. I've just highlighted a tiny bit of the track there. Then it will let me do that. Now when I go to noise removal and repair, it will, uh, in fact, nope, it's even, it's even bigger now. Is that, that little bit I highlighted is even bigger than we need. So we'd zoom right in and we'd highlight the part we wanted. The reason those, those weren't showing me what I wanted to do is that I hadn't highlighted anything. Anyway, back to normalize. We highlight the whole track then, and then we go to volume and normalize. So I wanna show you something here. You can set the peak volume. So you would set this to something below zero. Um, I don't know, 
whatever you want. I've, I, I normally set mine quite loud. I normally set mine to about minus two. Uh, and then this is the one I want to show you, remove DC offset. This is a really clever little setting because sometimes just due to technical reasons that I'm not going to go into, there is a slight offset from zero in the way the track has been ripped. And that can have problems with headroom and even with compatibility. Just leave it ticked and it will just correct that little pesky thing that might go wrong. Uh, and then click normalize. So I'm going to click apply now and you'll see the whole track will get louder. You see that got louder there? So this is now nice and loud. That's why you don't have to have it really, really loud at the beginning. And then you have to export it. So in Audacity, you just go to export and then you choose how you want to export it. So I'm, I would not choose any of these options. You can export as MP3, a high quality MP3 is fine. I always go to audio and then choose FLAC from the downloads here. FLAC is useful because they're quite small files or relatively small compared to WAV files, but they are lossless. Uh, and then save it out. Now you can add metadata in here. You can add track titles and stuff. I never do that in here. And the reason I never do that in there is that my, the final stage I want to tell you when you've got a nice, loud, corrected, clean, trimmed file uh, is to add that metadata. By metadata, I mean artist, title, artwork, and so on. I always use an external program to do this. So you could do this in your DJ software, if your DJ software lets you do it, but I use a program, I use this too, I use regularly. The one in the studio I use is called MP3 Tag. It looks like this. I've just grabbed a track out of our collection here and pulled it onto here. So here's the track, and you can see when I click on the track, all the metadata is here. Uh, so I've got the artist, the title, and everything else about the track. I always add artist, title, year, and genre. I don't worry about anything else. But this here is the artwork. You can go off to Google Images or whatever, find a piece of artwork, drag it onto there, click Save, and it will now save it with your file. And that's it. That is the way to rip individual tracks really quickly and get decent quality when you're doing so on your laptop with a DJ turntable, a hi-fi turntable, whatever you've got. I've just covered everything you need and the process I go through to do it. Now, I did want to just give you a little bit more information here, a few more tips to help if you're interested in going ahead and doing this. I do want to tell you that we have a product called Digital DJ Lab. Digital DJ Lab is the Digital DJ Tips subscription program. All of our courses at Digital DJ Tips are buy once, keep forever. We're not into subscription for any of that stuff. You want a course from us, you go buy it. But if you want to go past that and you want to stay up to date with the way DJing is done today and all the extra bits that will keep you on top of the game, then that's what our Digital DJ Lab subscription program is all about. It's got hundreds and hundreds of what we call action plans where there is a, um, a really deep, in-depth look at the way to do stuff. What I just showed you there very, very briefly, we cover in a lot of detail in a action plan from December 2023 inside Digital DJ Lab. So if you want me to literally talk you through the whole thing and if you want to ask questions along the way of me and get immediate answers, that is where to do it. And one of the things we look at in there is the program I'm about to show you here. We show you Audacity, but we also show you this program here. So this is called Vinyl Studio. So Vinyl Studio is, in fact, I'll show you their website first because that's kind of like a better explanation of how it works. And then once we've had a quick look at their website, I'll show you this, the program itself. So this is their website. Vinyl Studio is a old school, as you can see from their website, you know, really is old school. Hey, hot news, we're now on Facebook. <laughs> I mean, you've got to laugh at that, haven't you? But, you know, I'm not poking fun at them because this is a supremely powerful piece of Mac and PC software, Mac and Windows software. It is a piece of software that will really speed up ripping music, especially if you want to rip more than one track at a time. For DJs, don't. For DJs, just rip the individual tracks that you need. Seriously, there's no point ripping whole albums. Go and buy the album for $5 or whatever it costs on, uh, you know, on wherever you get your music from. Uh, but you might be a record collector. You might, outside of your DJing, want to rip those really, really... Um, those really valuable albums that you've got that you can't find on digital because they're live bootlegs or whatever, right? I get it. I'm like you. I, reg I regularly rip stuff for all these reasons. So Vinyl Studio is really good. And the reason it's really good, now I'll, I'll show you a quick look at the software, is that it lets you go through this process you can see at the top here. So you click record first, uh, you check your recording levels in here and you get everything right in here. Then you click record uh, and then once you finish recording, you go to split tracks where you can very quickly look at your waveform. It would be in the middle here, but I've not got anything loaded. And very quickly uh, show it where the track changes are. You can clean up the audio with all the tools. Again, the waveform would be in the middle. All these tools down here, automatic click removal, manual click removal, and all kinds of other stuff as well, compression and EQ and so on. Uh, and then when 
you've done all that, you can go to batch and it will batch output that, including adding the metadata for all the tracks that it finds on the internet for you, or you can enter manually, and the artwork and everything. You can rip really, really fast on Vinyl Studio, and that's why I recommend it if you've got a lot of ripping to do. It'll save you so much time. So that's my first tip. Uh, my second tip is you don't have to stop doing what I said trimming the file to make it shorter, removing the worst clicks and pops and so on, and then normalizing it. You don't have to stop at doing that. There are other things that you could use inside Audacity to tidy up your files. The ones you'll see people talking about and the ones that I will tell you about because I've used them are noise reduction, where you sample a little bit of the audio from the beginning of the track before the music started, which will have all the background noise and all the surface noise and all the hissing and stuff from the piece of vinyl. And then you tell the system, look, take this off the whole recording. And then it will cleverly kind of sample that and it will go through the whole recording taking that background noise off. It can really clean up old records by using noise reduction. So look for that one. Another good one to use is a bit of very light compression. If you don't know what a compressor is, a compressor will turn down the loudest parts of the audio while turning up the quietest parts. In other words, it just makes the audio go a little bit like that. Now, modern music, is more like that than older music. And so if you compress older vinyl rips a little bit, when you normalize it, the whole thing will get louder. So if you're playing these tracks alongside your modern music in your DJ software, then that can be a good thing to do because the volume difference between old vinyl rips and modern over-compressed, some would say, music will be a lot smaller. So a little bit of light compression can be good before normalizing. And finally, uh, a rumble filter. You might hear people talking about rumble filters. A rumble filter is where basically the software removes low, very, very low frequency, inaudible noise. You don't want that on your files because it will damage speakers for no bonus. You don't want these big signals that are pushing your speakers in and out uh, that no one can even hear. So that will remove those. However, what I would say is, if you've got really nicely set up turntables on, you know, that are, that are nicely isolated, if you're being very careful when you rip, you've got everything set right here, you're not playing too loud in the room when you're ripping because that might make the whole needle vibrate and put feedback back into the system. And you're just generally very, very careful. Uh, you're not walking around near the turntable, so it's kind of bouncing up and down, getting bass that maybe you can't hear, but is in there, right? So you're just very careful when you're ripping, treating it like a, a one-off performance of that record. If you do all that stuff, then you ain't gonna need a lot of these filters and these corrections, especially rumble. So it's better to rip first than to, and get it right first than to try and correct afterwards. A really good example is in this studio. We do a lot of recording in this studio. You probably recognize this studio, although actually we normally have a white background. So just letting you into how this works. Uh, we don't have a massive, a massive complex of studios here. No, we just do that when we're presenting inside our courses, right? So we get no distractions, right? If I'm teaching you, I want you to be watching me. Uh, but of course, when we do this live stuff, we don't do that. We like to do this. So in this studio, when we're recording, every single camera angle, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, uh, and then of course the Master Pro gear that we sometimes talk about, uh, they're all tuned, focused, and made to look right at the very beginning of the show. Why? Because that means there's no editing afterwards and there's no worrying about it while we're doing it. Same with your record decks. Spend the time getting everything right getting this right, getting this right, getting the height right, getting it isolated properly, checking its level, checking the recording over and over again. And then when you're ripping, sitting still in the room, being very, very, very careful not to do anything that might jog it or wobble it a bit, do all that right and it will save you a load of time later. Just like setting up our cameras right here saves me a load of time in the edit later when we are making lessons or doing that kind of thing. Right, so do that and you'll find that you don't have to worry too much about all this stuff. Um, I want to just end by saying, don't do this. <laughs> Seriously, don't do it. This is fun, it's geeky, but it's hard to get results that are better than just using a digital download of the stuff that you want. So unless your music is unobtainable or you've got other good reasons to rip it, don't bother with this. But if you do have to rip stuff, I've just given you a potted uh, way of how to do it. And if you do want more detail and you want me to talk you through 
how I do this on both Vinyl Studio and Audacity, and you want to hear the differences when we apply these filters and watch me applying all that stuff, then do look out for that action plan inside our Digital DJ Lab subscription program. And you can find out about that on the Digital DJ Tips website. Go to the courses page, scroll to the bottom. Right, useful, load of rubbish, something you do, something you'll never do, something you're planning on doing. Let's find out because I'm going to pull the computer in now uh, and we're going to talk ripping for uh, a few minutes now to end off today's show. So welcome everyone who's joining us live. Hello to all our regulars as ever. Uh, so I want to give a shout out today, just picking a few names to Kesha, DJ Baldwin, uh, to Cabes. Hello to Isomatic and Don Belcher. Uh, and The Ruckus and Kevin Mobile Disco Network, who says Merry Christmas. Hello to Wanakami on Twitch, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So many of you fantastic people here uh, saying hello as always. So lovely to see you all. And a special shout to Charlie who says, I'm live, I'm here live. Uh, finally, I got to one. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Charlie, it's good to have you here. Right, so um, so DJ Stu says, hi everyone, I also just try to buy digital files, but there is stuff like Coke Escovedo that I, is not available. Um, Coke Escovedo, I wouldn't change a thing apparently, it's not available on any downloading services, so there you go. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of tracks like that for sure. Um, so, uh, you don't like my music, says, I once planned to rip all my vinyl. I gave up after one day, I feel your pain. I wish I'd given up after one day in 2004 when I ripped it all to one to eight MP3. I will tell you that much. Uh, Don says there's no quick way to rip vinyl. I agree, there's no quick way to rip vinyl. Uh, only rip from CDs. Well, it's great if you've got them, of course, but, uh, but uh, if you haven't, then uh, vinyl is the way to go. Uh, if the vinyl is what you want to rip, kind of makes sense. Um, so hello to Danny. I haven't seen you for a while, Danny. Good to have you here. Um, this is from Tom Tom, who says, hey, I would have joined this live stream, whatever you're talking about. I end up, I end up watching all of these, whatever the subject is on replay. Oh, Tom Tom, thank you very much. We do try and make them fun. Uh, although they are definitely geeky, I will give you that. But uh, hey, DJing is geeky. People don't understand the geekiness that goes into these cool DJ performances, right? That's what we're here to help you with. You, you put in the performance, we'll show you all the stuff in the background that you need to do. Apparently the Stanton C120 has got a switch button. Thank you for sharing that, Stefan. Um, the Project Phone Box Direct to USB is an amaz amazing solution. Right, cool, that's, that's amazing. So my turntable is this one here. I showed it to you earlier, the Project or Project turntable. And I also showed you that around the back, it's got a built-in little box. Uh, that is literally a box screwed onto the bottom of the turntable with that USB output, which is similar to a box that they sell standalone, which does the same thing, which has just been pointed out there. So thank you for pointing that out, uh, Nick. Right, so um, lots of you catching it for the first time today. Sean on YouTube is saying, hey, first time I've caught this show. Uh, so Larry says, what about a weight on the spindle? I've never tried a spindle weight, but yes, that will reduce vibration as well. You see sometimes, um, you can see them on sale, like a heavy weight that just clips on top and holds the record down. Also, if your record's a bit warped, you see like, you can see stuff on YouTube about flattening out warped records and all that kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, Tom Tom says, how many DJs under the age of 35 still have vinyl? You would be surprised how many people are collecting vinyl now, even though they don't even have a turntable. There's something about vinyl, that's all I'm gonna say. Just like there's something about, and it doesn't have to be a turntable, it could easily be one of these, but there's something about jog wheels, you just can't take the wheels out of DJing. You cannot take the wheels out of DJing. Don't ask me why, it's fact. Uh, right, so, um, so this one here is from, oh, a lot of you just pointing out the errors in, uh, in uh, Audacity when I when I'd forgotten to highlight the track. Thank you for that, yeah. Um, this is from Potterby who says, I've been using Rogue Amiga software uh, for Mac for years. Thank you for pointing out the software you're using to help with this kind of thing. Uh, this is from DJ Randall who says, one thing I heard was to remove the slip mats when you're ripping as they may cause the beat grid to be off. I've no, never ever heard that. You've got to have something on your turntable, some kind of mat. There's all kinds of mats you can have. You can have felt like this. You can get leather mats nowadays that are meant to reduce static and stuff. Uh, whatever, you're going to need something. You don't want to put it directly on the metal. Um, so uh, I've never had that issue with slip mats, says Stu C immediately coming back at that comment. Uh, a turntable weight though is a good idea. Oh, I'll tell you what else I forgot to say. Uh, clean your records. 
Cleaning fluid. This is some professional cleaning fluid I've got here. It's apparently the same cleaning cleaning fluid that they sell to Abbey Road Studios. I don't know if that's true, uh, but yeah, you can buy cleaning fluid on uh, on um, Amazon or whatever. They give you a couple of mats like this. The idea is that you put one mat down, you put your record on that mat, you spray the cleaning fluid on the record, avoiding the label, and then you use the other mat to clean the record. They even give you a little stand that you can stand the record up while it's drying. Uh, and at the very least use a brush, but a brush won't get rid of the static. It might get the dust off, but it won't get rid of the static. Cleaning will get rid of static off records. Hot weather seems to bring static up. I find that my records, I mean, this is totally geeky stuff. I find they rip better in winter than summer. <laughs> so there you go. Um, right, um, and I am a preacher man says, or oh, just buy a digital version of the track you gotta have. You're reminding me here of my parents trying to digitize old photos. Oh, my dad does that all the time. He's digitized everything. Well, to be fair, you can't buy the old photos uh, on uh, iTunes. So I think your parents are onto something there. No, I totally agree with you, I'm a preacher man. If you, if, as I've said all the way through this, don't do this. Uh, but sometimes you will have reason to do it, as we've talked about. So uh, this is from uh, DJ, uh, DJ Stu C, where people are talking about the revival of vinyl. There are record shops popping up all over the place. They really are. I love it. It's fun. Uh, so what else have we got to talk about here regarding ripping vinyl? Any questions I can help you with? Basically all helping each other as ever. Um, vinyl rips may need quantization. There are always slight variations in the rot rotational speed of turntables, says DJ Sarah Hall. I agree completely. Also, if your hole is not quite in the middle of the record, and that happens more often, well, more often than you might think, then as the record's going round, that I'm, I'm going to exaggerate now, as the record's going round, the needle's doing this, which means that it's going up and then down a little bit, and then up and then down a little bit, and then up and then down a little bit, all the way through the recording, which means the pitch is moving around, but just as importantly, the tempo is moving around. So be careful with beat gridding when you're using this kind of rip as well. Right, uh, I've ripped things that I wanted to use on my DDJ-1000 with an Audio-Technica uh, 120 USB using Virtual DJ. Virtual DJ can record, says Super Stand Steel, and it works perfectly, really, really clean rips. So thanks for that. Um, lots of you talking about the revival of vinyl, not believing it, trust me, it's a thing. There's new pressing factories opening uh, all over the place, unbelievably. Uh, I had my first turntable in 1975. Uh, says I'm a preacher man who is completely against vinyl. Uh, I'm a preacher man is clearly anti-vinyl nowadays. Uh, it's cool. You be you. Uh, right, Nick says I've done loads of rips over time. I've used Soundforge, MP3 tag, and Platinum Notes. Uh, Platinum Notes is a nice way to clean up and make them sound louder. By the way, um, but I didn't go into that here. Um, the biggest problem I've had: uh, an old computer causing lots of dropouts in the rip. Oh well, I hope. Uh, I hope uh, you got a newer computer and fixed that. Um, right, anything else I can help you with, people? Do ask now or forever hold your vinyl. Uh, great stuff, Phil. I've noticed that ripped vinyl usually needs a lot of beat grid editing. It's exactly what we were just saying, wasn't it, Manos? Uh, it looks like it's always sliding around. It's because it's an analog recording. It's not, you know, it is. I mean, it could be that it's an old track. They tend to be older tracks, which, which will tend to need more, more, more work anyway, even if they're digital. But you then add in a vinyl rip, it's just adding more that needs doing. Uh, so Scratch Gonzo on uh, Twitch says, I ripped all my records and I accidentally deleted my hard drive contents. Uh, I, this forced me to finally find digital releases for everything. Um, I wasn't gonna rip them all again and my library is now far superior. Although I love my records, digital is just so more convenient nowadays. I forgot to say something else actually as well, so thanks for reminding me. You reminded me there saying you accidentally deleted all your tracks. Before you start processing tracks in Audacity or something like that, it's a really good idea just to click, quickly go to the top and save them out. Either save the project or even easier, just go to export and export as WAV, just before you do anything. And then if you mess it up, or later on you think, oh, I wish I'd applied a bit of noise reduction or whatever. You can do it all again, right? So you've got the originals. So go and back up the original rips before you start doing stuff with them. Uh, so you really are getting out of my head everything I think you need to know here, folks, which is cool. That's what it's all about. Um, Concord says Super Stand Steel. Have a digital cartridge, which sounds really good. So that might help. Thank you for sharing that. Herbie, my man, how the hell are you? Uh, Herbie says, my 17-year-old son is busting out drum and bass on vinyl. I hope you're both very well. I DJ with Herbie for many, many years back in the 90s and early 2000s, having some of the best times ever. In fact, I've got the book of it here somewhere, Herbie. Shall I whip it out and we'll have a little look? 
this is the club. I, I'm bigging it up here now. What if I couldn't find it? This is the club that Herbie and I used to DJ at together all those years ago. I, will find, I know I'll find Herbie's name on probably the first fly we see. There he is. There's the Herbster. You probably can't see this because it's too small. Herbie, it's lovely to hear from you, mate. And what good days they were, eh? Uh, right, so um, I love how your explanation is so thorough and also so concise, says JJ Johnson on YouTube. Uh, I know everything you're explaining is always on point, solid advice. I enjoy all your videos. Oh, thank you very much. Um, so I think we're probably done here today. Uh, I am out of here, folks. Thank you for watching. I hope I've helped you if you're thinking about ripping vinyl uh, or if you're trying to decide whether or not to do it. Generally don't, but if you need to, I've given you some advice here that will help. And if you are interested in not only me actually talking you through it and showing you in a lot more depth than I've just done, but, uh, but um, all the other action plans and all the other amazing stuff we've got inside Digital DJ Lab, uh, then head over to the Digital DJ Tips website. So you're going to go to digitaldjtips.com. And then at the top of the site, you're going to go to DJ Courses here, or you're just going to scroll down to the bottom of the homepage and you're going to find Digital DJ Lab. Take a look at Digital DJ Lab. It's our subscription program to help you level up your DJing. And inside there, we're going to be adding it in December. You will find me talking through this stuff, but also you'll find hundreds of other lessons uh, that will help you become a better DJ. So come take a look. Meanwhile, for me in the studio, get good, get out there, make the moments. Until next time, bye-bye.